Hey class, welcome to your Advanced Algebra Chapter 9 pretest. I know you guys are super excited, so let's get right to it, because you don't think you're going to have enough time to be able to finish this thing, and I'm going to try to prove to you that you will have enough time, because it's not that hard of a test. Or maybe it is hard to test, but I think you guys will do great. Alright, I'll stop talking. Uh, the first question, uh, which graph below could possibly be the graph of an exponential growth? Well, the only one that's really growing is D. Uh, this one, of course, is linear, so that's none of the graphs that we've looked at in this chapter. This one is our growth function. Um, it's growing slowly and then grows faster and faster and faster. That's exponential growth. This is the opposite of it. It's going fast, growing fast, and then it's getting growing slower and slower and slower. Kind of looks like the inverse of it. What do you know? It is the inverse of it. It's a logarithmic function. And this one, well, it's actually shrinking the whole time. It's shrinking fast and then shrinking slower and slower. That is exponential decay. So yeah, you should be able to recognize those graphs. Um, the second one is, hey, I don't know. It, it, these next two, 2a and 2b, are really just essentially definitions of logarithms um, but you could you could solve this like obviously if we're looking for the inverse of uh, y equals 5x well the inverse function is always um, is a logarithm uh, this is an exponential function so the inverse of it is going to be a logarithmic function uh, we know that but I can I can kind of show it too because what we can do um, we can switch uh, or sorry we can take the yeah, switch the x and the y, so we end up with x equals 5 to the y power. And then we could, you know, mess with this formula, or mess with this function a little bit to get rid of that uh, y in the exponent by taking the log of both sides, log of x. And you know what? I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be tricky, tricky here. And you'll see why I'm going to do this in a second. I'm going to take the log base 5 of both sides. So log base 5 of x equals log base 5 of 5 to the y. And uh, we know by the power property I could bring that y down in front. Uh, we also know by uh, one of the other properties that log base 5 of 5 is, is 1. So log of 5 log base 5 of 5 to the y power is just y and so I'm left with y equals log base 5 of x. There we go. Um, this one's a little simpler to quickly do the uh, inverse. Let's uh, switch the x and the y so we have x equals log base 3 of y, and what that really means of log base 3 of y, is it means 3 to the x power equals y. So y equals 3 to the x power, the exponential function. So really those two are just uh, reverses of each other, so that was quick and easy. Um, these next set of problems some of them you will notice right away and you'll be able to solve really quickly um, just off the top of your head. Uh, but any of these you can actually check in your calculator. I'm going to show you how in a minute. And that's because we have that uh, change of base theorem that we learned. So if you've got like log base 5, that's not something you have in your calculator. But we can actually compute it with our calculator. But I don't think I need to for that problem because log base 5 of 25 equals something. What does that equal? Well, it means 5 to what power equals 25? 5 to what power equals 25? Well, I know 5 squared is 25. This one might not jump out to you quite as quickly, uh, but it's the same idea. You know, 6 to what power equals 7,776? Uh, with a little trial and error in your calculator, you could probably quickly figure out that it's 6 to the fifth power. Now the next one's maybe a little trickier. Uh, 27 to what power equals 3? 
Um, hmm. How would I get 27 to actually shrink down to 3? Um, my two options would be... I mean, the two things that immediately pop in my head is that if I have a negative exponent, well, that means it shrinks down, but that'd be something like 1 over 27 to the first power, 27 to the second power. That's not going to work. Um, the other option is, what about a fraction, which is really like taking, you know, if it's to the one-half power, it would be a square root. If it's to the one-third power, it's the cubed root, and you know what? I can just see that one off the top of my head, that I know that 3 times 3 times 3 equals 27, and so the cubed root of 27 is 3 which is the same as saying 27 to the one-third power is 3. Um, the next one there, 32 to what power equals 1? Oh, well, 0. In fact, if I have log base anything of 1, uh, it's always going to be 0, because anything to the 0 power equals 1. Uh, the next one here, I got 11 to what power equals... 1 over 121. Uh, again, I got a really small number, so I'm thinking either ne uh, it, the first things that pop in my head are either negative exponent or uh, fraction. But I don't think it's like a square root or a cube root of 11. I do know that 11 squared equals 121, so if I had 11 to the negative 2 power, that equals the same as 1 over 11 squared. Remember, a negative exponent just means it moves to the denominator. So that's what I want, negative 2. x to the negative 2 power is 1 over 121. Here we go. Um, this next one, I, I can come up with two different ways that I could solve this pretty easily. I still haven't shown you the calculator thing yet, have I? Uh, I promise I'll get to it. Um, I could first think of 9 to what power equals 81, and I would have, oh, well, that equals 2, so I'd have 1 half times 2 equals 1. Or I could think of it as log base 9 of 81 to the 1 half power. What's the square root of 81? It's 9, so log base 9 of 9, well, that's always just 1. So either way, I get 1. Um, this one, again, might look tricky. You might want to plug in that 7 to the negative 10 power, but don't waste your time. All I'm trying to figure out is 7 to what power... 7 to what power equals 7 to the negative 10th power? Oh, well, that should be negative 10. The other option I could do there would be take the... Because of the product... Uh, sorry, the power property, I could take that negative 10 and put it down in front... And then that log base 7 of 7 just becomes 1, so it's negative 10 times 1, which is negative 10. Uh, log base 12 of 12, 12 to what power equals 12? 12 to the first power. I'm not even going to jot any notes down on that one, that's so quick. And this last one, 5 to what power will equal negative 5? Nothing. No solution. There is no real power of 5. You know, if you went to a negative power, you might be tempted to think like negative 1, but that would just be 5 to the negative 1 equals 1 fifth, so that doesn't work. Um, I can't do it to a fraction one. There's nothing that will turn it into a, a negative number, so there's no solution there. All right, we're making good progress. Ooh, the rocket Vladimir bought for $10,200 loses about 8% of its value per year. What will that rocket be worth in three and a half years? Well, I'm going to use that function that A equals uh, the principal, so the amount equals the principal, times 1 plus the rate to the T power. Okay, well, so A, what I'm trying to solve for, equals 10000 200 
times 1. Now in this case we're losing 8% of our value, so it's instead of plus 8%, it's actually minus 8%, so minus 0.08 to the 3.5 uh, years, 3.5 power. Now I don't know that off the top of my head, so I'm going to have to go punch that in my calculator. Do do do. 10,200 times, where was that, 0 0.92 to the 3.5 power, 7,618. I'll go with that. Equals 7,618. Good. Um, here we've got kind of... Uh, the the opposite problem um, well not the opposite problem but we're, we're now going to have to try solve for the um, the exponent there I can use that same sort of uh, uh, that same sort of formula so I'll use the um, um, I'm wanting to know how much will be left the amount that will be left and I started with 12 pounds now after one year I'll lose half of it so you know, if it was one year, it'd be time, or sorry, after one half life, after 100 years, um, I would lose half of it. I'd be down to six pounds. After two years, I'd be down to three pounds. I'd take half again. So what it really is, is that 0.5 to a power, the number of half lives that I have. So after 100 years, it'd be to the power of one. After 200 years, it'd be to the power of two. After 300 years, it'd be uh, the power of three. But I actually have 360 years there. Not quite an even number. Um, I could think of that 360 years, 2090 to 2450, 2450 as um, 3.6 half-lives, 360 years divided by 100. Or I could just put it up there in the formula, 360 over 100. So I've got 12 times 0.5 to the 3.6 power. So let's do that a second. 12 times 0.5 to the 3.6 power. 0.99 pounds left. So by 2450 it would be down to less than a pound. 99 hundredths of a pound. Um, the same problem here then we can also go in the reverse direction so we started with 12 pounds but in this case we're going back 90 years so negative 90 years uh, this was 90 years before the 2090 the, when the 12 pounds were found and so I'm really lo going back not quite a full half-life so I'm not gonna have quite 24 pounds but it's probably going to be pretty close to that, and I could think of it as um, a negative 0.9 half-lives, or I could just say negative 90 years divided by 100, which equals 0.9. So let's let's plug that in, in a second. Um, instead of to the 3.6 power, we'll put it to the negative 0.9 power, and 22.4 pounds. So kind of like what we expected there. Oops, wrong one. Let's go to this one. Uh, kind of what we expected there, we would have almost 24 pounds because it's almost a whole half-life before. Alright, number six. Um, this one's just a kind of a wording thing, make sure you can understand it. The common log of a number is five. And in math, the word is is always equal. So, And the common log means log base ten. Oops, log base 10, there we go. That was an ugly 10. Let's try that again. Log base 10 of some number, of a number, we'll try and figure out what that number is, equals 5. Well, now we just need the definition of a log. It means 10 to the 5th power equals that x there. So x equals 10 to the 5th power, so 10... Ten times ten times ten times ten times ten. Ten with five zeros, hundred thousand. Yay, we're good. 
Um, let's find each of these as a decimal or a fraction. Well, this is log without a base down there. That means it's log base 10. So 10 to what power equals 0.1? Or I could say equals 1 tenth. And I know that if it's 10 to the negative 1 power, that would be 1 over um, 10 to the first. So that equals... Uh, 10 to the negative 1. So basically x equals negative 1. Uh, that one I could actually punch right into the calculator if I wanted, but I, I certainly don't need to. Um, I can solve it pretty quickly without the calculator. Here, um, just using that natural log function, that's log base e of e squared. Well, I can take that 2 down in front and the natural log of e, log base e to e, uh, sorry, log base e of e uh, is going to be 1, so 2 times 1 equals 2. Um, see me if you got any problems with that one. Uh, this one's probably our trickiest one because we've got log base 10 of this weird thing. But I, I think I want to rewrite that. I'm going to rewrite it as 10 to the 5th, that whole thing, to the 1 third power, because uh, the cube root is to the one-third power, so I could really say it's log base 10 of 10 to the five-thirds. Well, log base, when you have the base and the, the number that are the same, really all that you're left with is the five-thirds. Again, we could do that, take it down in front, see that that equals one. Um, by the power property, but yes, it's just five-thirds. Um, all of those you could punch into the calculator too if you like. Uh, they should spit back the same answer for you. Of course, it's faster if you don't have to type it into the calculator. Um, goodness, I feel like I still haven't shown you the change of base thing in the calculator. Hopefully we'll come back to that. So let's do number 8. Um, solve each of these. What does this mean? It means 5 to the negative 2 power equals x. Oops. Let me, uh... 5 to the negative 2 power is 1 over 5 squared. It equals 1 over 25. Uh, this one, i got to get that x out of the exponent, so I can take the log of both sides, or in this case, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Uh, equals the natural log of 42. Um, that means I can take this exponent and put it in front, so I have x minus 3 times the natural log of e equals the natural log of 42. Uh, the natural log of e is just 1, so I'm left with x minus 3 equals the natural log of 42. So I'll add 3 to both sides, and I have x equals natural log of 42 plus 3. I don't actually know what that is, so I'm going to go to my calculator. Natural log of 42 plus 3, oops, watch my parentheses there, plus 3 is 6.74. Sweet. Moving on. Uh, two more to solve here. Uh, I got 6e to the x equals 72. I'm going to divide both sides by 6 to start, and I've got e to the x equals 12. I'll take the natural log of both sides. And I can take that x down in front, and I'm left, and because natural log of e is just uh, e, is just 1, 1 times x is x x equals the natural log of 12. I'm actually just going to leave it as that. That is a number. I'm content with that. You may leave it as that as, as well. You're welcome. Alright, one more. I gotta get that exponent down. I'll just take the log of both sides. Log of 4 to the x equals log of 12 to the 1 
half power. That is what a square root is. I can take those exponents down in front, so I have x times log 4 equals 1 half times log 12. And I can divide both sides by the log of 4, and I'm left with x equals 1 half log 12 divided by log of 4. I better go punch that in my calculator, because I don't know that. 0.5 times, oops, try that again, times log of 12 divided by log of 4, I get 0.896, I'll say point, I'll just say 0.896, sounds good. Sweet. We're getting there. 20 minutes in. Plus explanation. Alright, pretend you are babysitting a 10 year old child. Explain to him both with picture and words what an asymptote is. Well, asymptote would be... Um, a line that my function is getting closer and closer to. So it's like this. Oh. The asymptote is that I'm getting closer and closer to this x-axis. Um, so I drew it in pictures. It's the it's the uh, line I get close to but never touch. Closer to but never touch. Okay. That was sloppy handwriting, I apologize. But you can answer that one. Hey, how about Pedro? He's got $6,000 to invest in an account that is compounded continuously. Good luck ever finding something that compounds interest for you continuously. But if it did, we would use that formula. The amount equals principal times e to the rt. Well, he's got 6000 to invest. Has a rate of 3.15 for 6 years, so that times e to the 0 0.0315 times 6. I don't know what that is. Let's punch it into a calculator. 6,000 times e to the, let's do this in parentheses, 0 0.0315 times 6 years. He would have seven thousand two hundred and forty-eight dollars. All right. I'll put the dollar sign in. It'll make some science teacher happy because I labeled it. Oh, and maybe math teacher too. All right, uh, if Pedro wants his 6000 to double in the same amount, in other words, he wants it to become $12,000, um, he starts with $6,000, using that same formula, e to the same rate, 0 0.0315 times t. I need to figure out what t is. How long should he leave it alone? Well, let's divide both sides by 6000 so I get 2 equals e to the 0 0.0315t. And then I'll take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of e to the 0 0.0315t. Power property says I can take that down in front. Uh, the property that it's the... whatever. There's lots of properties. I feel like I've gone over this a lot of times. What I'm left with is natural log of 2 equals 0 0.0315t. I can divide both sides by 0 0.0315. So t equals natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.035. Let's plug that into a calculator a second. Uh, natural log of 2 divided by 0 0.0315 should take him 22 years at that rate to double his money.
Do 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 do. Next up, write each expression. I'm sorry, 11B somehow ended up down there. We'll move it over here. All right. Uh, write each expression as a single log. Example log of 34. Well, there's a couple easy rules when we have log. Um, two logarithms with the same base added together. What it equals is those two multiplied together, like so, if we're going to write it as a single logarithm, so it's log of 8. Um, here we can use that power property in reverse and put that uh, back up into the exponent there. So 4 cubed is 64, so now we have the log of 64. Here we're going to do it in two steps. I'm going to do two of the same thing. So I'm going to have log of 4 times 8 minus, and now I'm going to bring that 3 up, and I'm going to have log of 2 to the third. So I've got log of 32 minus log of 8. And by the quotient rule, I know that I can do the 30 log of 32 minus the log of 8. That equals um, the log of 32 divided by 8. So I'm left with log of 4. Um, write this uh, in exponential form. Well, remember, natural log of 12 equals roughly 2.45. What that means is it's the same thing as saying log, oops, base e of 12 equals 2.485. In other words, e to the 2.485 power equals... 12. Almost done there. Consider the function y equals log base 4 of x. Uh, what is the domain? Uh, domain being what can we put in for x? Um, 4 to what power equals x? I, if I think of it that way, it'd be 4. Oops. Let me write that right, 4 to the y equals x. Well, is x ever going to be uh, negative? And the answer is obviously not, because 4 to some power is never going to be a negative number. If it's a negative power, well, it's just going to be a fraction. If it's um, a fractional power, it's going to be some root of that. It's never going to actually be a negative number. So, what's the range? All positive. And uh, what's what's the range? What can y be? Well, y can be anything we want it to be. And so the range is all reals. Like two problems to go. Oh, number 14 is easy one to make a mistake on. We have one that's 7 on the Richter scale, and another earthquake that's only 5, and you might be tempted to do 7 divided by 5 equals, oh, it's 1.4 times as big. No, and in fact, I'm just going to make that go away. Okay. I went too far back. There we go. What the Richter scale is, it's a logarithmic scale, so what it really is saying that one earthquake is like 10 to the 7th power, and the other Richter, uh, the other, uh, the other earthquake was 10 to the 5th power, so what we're left with is 10 squared which equals 100. So if it's two points higher on the Richter scale, it means it was 100 times more powerful than the first. That brings me to my last problem. And then I'll go back and do the change of base one for your calculator for those first page of problems, because I don't think I've had need to do that yet, surprisingly. Um, this one is a little bit confusing, although uh, you got to read it right. The natural log of x is 3, and the natural log of y is 4. Um, these actually become really easy. We know by the power pro 
property that I can take that 2 down in front, so I get 2 times the natural log of uh, x. Well, what is the natural log of x? Huh? It equals 3. So what do I really have? 2 times the natural log of x is 2 times 3. Yes, that is the answer. 6. Um, here are a couple more steps, but same idea. Um, let's take that 4 down in front, so I've got 4 times the natural log of x times y, plus the natural log of e is really just 1. e to the first power equals e. Uh, but now I can, let me put this in parentheses too, I can, by the uh, product property, I can actually split that apart and say it's 4 times the natural log of x plus the natural log of y plus 1. And now I know that the natural log of x, oops, i got to scroll up so you can see it, natural log of x equals 3. So I've got 4 times 3 plus the natural log of y. I'm going to substitute 4 in for that because the natural log of y equals 4 plus 1. I've got 4 times 7 plus 1 equals 29. Yay! Now I want to do one last thing here. I'm just going to scroll down and that's that change of base property. Um, and I'll use that log of log base 6 of 7776 because that one might have been hard for it to uh, to for you to see immediately that it should be to the fifth power. So let's take that that problem a second. Um, again, it means six to what power equals seven sixty seven thousand seven hundred seventy six. Um, but if we want to solve that, the um, change of base property told us that if we have a log base b of a we could choose a number t so log and do the log base t of a divided by the log base t of b and that would give us the answer so if i think about it in this problem the 7 this problem here, A is, if I'm looking at that, that, um, that function there, the A of this is 7,776, the B equals 6, and I said I can pick anything for T except 1. I can't pick 1 for T. Um, I am going to pick, I'll pick so I'll do log base 10, 7, 7, 7, 6, divided by log base 10 of 6. Why did I choose log base 10? Because that's the common log. That's the one that's in my calculator. And so, as you can see, I can do, you ready for this? Log base 10 of 7, 7, 7, 6 divided by log of 6 and it gives me the answer is 5. Isn't that the answer that we came up with? 6 to the 5th power equals 7,776. 7, so that's how we can use the calculator to quickly solve those and, and check our answers. Um, I didn't have to use log base 10, I could have used log base E which looks like this. And by the way, if I punch that in my calculator, I also get 5 because um, that change of base property always works. Just to prove it, I'll do it. So I get 5. So that's a really quick way to do those change of base um, problems. If you're, if you're stuck on any of those on that first page, you can quickly punch them into your calculator. Log of A divided by log of the B number, and it'll spit back the answer to you. 
I hope this helped. It took me longer than I expected to make this video. Um, but I don't think it'll take you, I hope it doesn't take you longer than it took me to make this video to actually take the test. Um, good luck studying. Have a wonderful day. T-Stape out.